Hello there, and we are back. Uh, so I hope you are enjoying the conference so far. And then, uh, and also the keynote as well, it's amazing keynote. So um, yeah, now we are having our talk again. <laughs> and our first speaker for this uh, block will be uh, Bo Yan. And Bo Yan is a good friend of mine. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Where are you calling from, for people who don't know? From Berlin. Oh, Berlin. And, oh. Yeah. Cool, cool stuff. And today I have a very, very special assistant. He's running all around, and his name is Frederick von Edelman. <laughs> it's a puppy with a very uh, huge name and royalty. Uh, cool stuff, cool stuff. And then uh, I hope the puppy doesn't make a debut while you're presenting. <laughs> um, I hope he does. Oh, you want to? Amazing. Okay, we'll see, we'll see. So uh, you tell us about the uh, dependency injection, which is a very, very uh, interesting, interesting topic. So I'll let you, let you take us away. Yeah, okay. Okay. So welcome, everybody. And first thing I want to tell you is I love each and every one of you. And I love you so much. I actually went undercover into Java community and I managed to steal some of their uh, secrets. And I'm going to share it today. So for you, I should suffer uh, Java. Now, one second. Dum, 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 dum. So, about me, I've been doing Python development for almost a decade. I'm a very, very good person and since I love unicorns and baking cakes. I work with AWS, I tried designing, also the input here, but I did some uh, Java development and even PHP, did not like it. But I tried uh, Python one day and ever since I've been only doing Python and that makes me super happy. And somehow I also ended up as a CEO of my company. Not sure how that happened, but I'll keep you in the loop. Now, we're going to talk about uh, Java. I know everybody has fears of Java, myself included, because there's so much code. My first experience with uh, Java was, uh, with Java and Python comparison was when I saw how you can easily open the file in Python. Like you just type open. And in Java, there's code and code and code and code, a bunch of things that are happening there that should not happen. But there are some good stuff in Java that we are not using that much in Python, mostly because we don't need them and we have the choice. They do not have the choice. So. I'm going to tell you about things that we could use that's going to help us become better, even better than all Java community. So uh, I'm going to talk about dependency injection, but let's uh, establish some basics first. Let's have unicorn that bakes cakes. So one class uses the another class. So when unicorn makes uh, cupcakes, he uses the oven. In this case, we can say that unicorn class depends on the oven. Fairly simple. You're always going to have some class using another class and depending on it. Now, in some cases, unicorn can use some fancy oven. And that's going to be another dependency. Nothing too scary. Uh, now, we're going to talk about dependency injection. The injection part. Uh, basically, you can make a unicorn class. So when you call a constructor, your unicorn class goes and sets up its own uh, oven, and then it works with it. Fairly simple stuff. We do it all the time. But the injection part uh, is uh, what's interesting. You can create the object of the oven class, then just pass it uh, to unicorn. And Unicorn doesn't have to set up a whole oven in order to bake some cakes. We can even preheat the oven, and Unicorn can do that without any troubles. So, as I mentioned here, very uh, nice thing to do. 
and it can sell you a bunch of uh, stuff, especially with something that you want to have a singleton, for example. I don't know why, but uh, let's say we want to. Depends injection to the rescue. Now, in Python, we have many ways of doing this. The simplest way to do it is to just extend the constructor. Say, okay, instead of initializing a cooking machine uh, to be an oven in the constructor, we're just going to pass it. And that's it. Whole thingy, few lines of code. It's everything beautiful in Python. Now, here uh, we introduce some difficulties. Right now, we have to first create an oven and then the unicorn class. A bit of extra work, but I'll show you very, very quickly why uh, this is going to pay off. Now, here's the stuff that uh, Java people can do. We can uh, create a unicorn class, and then during the runtime, we can just assign it to attribute cooking on. Now, words of advice. If you are going to do this approach, Never, ever, ever uh, just uh, assign stuff. Always declare the attribute in the initialization, like it here. See, self cooking machine. Uh, because if you don't do it like this, uh, you when you start working with the class, you're never going to know what are the attributes of my class. And that requires chasing down all the usages in the code and figuring out, okay, here I get this attribute, here I get this other attribute. And you do not want to do that. In Java, they try to stimulate this with getter and setters, but because we're the cool kid, uh, we can just take instance, slap uh, one nice attribute, object, whatever you want to do it. We get freedom. Now, in Java world, uh, things get uh, super scary and mess. Like, uh, they don't do testing like we do. We can basically just grab PyTest, monkey patch, change uh, stuff without any problem. For them, that's a bit difficult because uh, everything is statically typed. You cannot easily overwrite functions in code. So what they do is uh, they take stuff and make it depend on interfaces. And then you have, for example, database interface. One of the classes is for testing that is going to be a basically mock class. Another one is actual class that's connecting to the database. In Python, you don't have to do that. You can just in test overwrite the function that connects the database and say, tell it, oh, use this mock object that I created. But there is a, a logic to what they are doing. Since they're telling uh, compiler in advance why type, what type of dependency it is, they are going to notice errors much sooner than we do. I know from my experience, when I'm monkey patching stuff and mocking stuff, Usually, I need to run test a couple of times before I make sure that everything is done perfectly and nice. So, type hints are going to help us to get better uh, in Python without using Java. MyPy is absolutely amazing tool to use. And also, beside the MyPy, uh, I'm the PyCharm uh, user. I love it. As soon as you add type hints, you're going to get notifications and warnings about all the stuff where you forgot to use. And since we're working with uh, interfaces in Python, we're also going to notice if we did something wrong. Now, everybody knows uh, two dots and the type of the object. Very simple, and it works beautifully uh, if we try to give unicorn some strings say this is instead of cooking machine we give it a string that says this is a cooking machine uh, monkey is going to complain pycharm is going to complain so type hints super awesome
Now, uh, one reason I want to mention here is while uh, we're using abstract classes in Python to accomplish this, it's basically just to create an interface. It's not uh, we're going to define this class, then it's going to get inherited and stuff like that. No, we're just telling uh, this is a lightweight abstract class and it has this and this methods. For example, when I'm working with AWS, I might have a adapter class uh, that has upload uh, file, get file URL. That's all there is to it. Initialization and stuff like that, somebody else is going to handle it. Some other part of the code. But when I'm creating mocks and other stuff, I know how this class is going to be used by the rest of the system. So abstract classes are super nice in Python. We just don't use them that much. Now, dependency injection is super cool because we can uh, create a configuration file. In that configuration file, we can say, OK, uh, I'm going to use this class. Uh, for this, uh, and this, and this, and this, and this. Basically, make a list of classes that are used by your project. And when you're testing, you just give it another configuration file. Django does this quite nicely uh, with his uh, settings file. Just write strings. Uh, if you want to use, for example, a Redis for caching, you just add that. If you want to use something else for caching, for example, memcache, you just add that. And uh, once the application starts up, it looks at the configuration, sees, uh -huh, these are the things I need to do, and just uh, passes it to the main uh, class. Everything works perfectly and nicely. And because they have the common interface, which we already declared, there is absolutely no problem. And when we can, we can easily add our own uh, code and functions and objects, because we just have to inherit uh, that abstract class. And in my case, PyCharm is going to complain, OK, you need to declare these methods. I can declare them. They can do some nonsense, but the code is not going to crash because they know what they need to add. Now, writing mocks is very, very easy when you're working with interfaces because you know exactly what you need to mock. Without mocks, as I mentioned, it tends to get more, uh, let me make a change. Let me try stuff uh, as it happens. And afterwards, I'm going to figure this out. With uh, dependency injection and interfaces, it's super, super, super easy. It's very hard to mess up, even for me. And I mess up a lot. So mocks help you write better tests. Of course, if you're you can uh, just rewrite uh, some part of the object, then you don't need the interface. This is uh, just to tell you, OK, there is an alternative to just monkey patching uh, connections and stuff like that. Bigger decoupling. Now, this is the good stuff. Basically, where I use uh, dependency injection, that's on the domain borders. If I have uh, some. Uh, piece of code communicating with another independent part of the code, I'm just going to put uh, dependency injection in there. Basically, an interface. For me, uh, using them as adapters is extremely powerful, especially when working with clouds. For example, as I mentioned, you might use uh, one uh, cloud provider to upload file. You write a function for it. Now, uh, you on a client might demand uh, multi-cloud. It happens, they do. And then uh, you have to rewrite the code. OK, so if I pass through to this function, uh, to this object, it's going to initialize uh, AWS uh, data storage uh, class. However, if I pass this false, uh, this then it will initiate Azure uh, class for storing stuff which is pretty acceptable. But uh, once you start to keep adding flags and flags and flags, it gets very, very messy. So because I don't like messy code and because I'm very, very forgetful, 
I like to keep my code base as simple as possible. So in your uh, code, you can just declare the interface and then uh, based on the configuration, your worker uh, can just read that configuration file and then work. It is also super uh, nice when you're doing some uh, testing. For example, I wanna do some stress testing to see maybe I can use RevitMQ and see how things work out for my worker and microservices, or I can just uh, try AWS SQS or maybe some third solution. I could probably use maybe Redis and stuff like that. And the good thing here is that I just need to implement that interface and change configuration file. The rest of the code is already tested and it will not uh, be broken. So if there are some bugs in there, it's probably in the new code I added. So I love, uh, that way I can build nice little fences about all the integrations and craziness that I'm going to do and protect the rest of the code. It saves me a lot on debugging. As I mentioned, easier error detection. First of all, as mentioned here, before running the code, because my Py, PyCharm, probably uh, VS Code, I did not work that much in that. They are very good uh, at dealing with uh, type hints. So they are gonna complain and you're going to notice right away. This is good because uh, without them, I usually notice it in runtime. And on days when client is very, very busy and some change needs to be deployed extremely urgently right at the moment. For example, for Christmas website needs to have this very second snowflakes falling and it's mission critical. If you, you don't even wanna test the code, you just deploy it because that's snowflakes. Here, your compiler is gonna protect you from yourself. You're not, uh, you don't have to deploy it to production to find out what went wrong, if it's working. Disclaimer, do not uh, generate slow flakes in Python. That's usually JavaScript's uh, job. Now, the downside. There is a more code, as you have uh, seen earlier, when we use a constructor-based approach. Suddenly, uh, things that were very super easy, basically calling a unicorn constructor, become much, much harder. Since now, okay, before I call the unicorn constructor, I need to call this class, and then this class, and then this class, and then pass them into constructor. Things tend to get uh, pretty heavy. Yeah, but uh, benefits on the other hand are all the things that I mentioned. However, you can very easily create a wrapper around it. A system is going to read the configuration, see what classes go there, and then just in initialize the class for you. So it's more code, but you get cool stuff. Abstract classes. Best thing ever. Now, I say this with Pyas because I was coming from Java and it was always super, super difficult uh, to get my hand around uh, Liberty in Python. My first two months, I spent them basically trying to write uh, Java in Python. So once I stopped doing that, I had a mild aversion to the Java way of doing things. So I didn't use abstract classes for a long time. But then when I started using them, I started using them probably way too much. Now, for those of you uh, who are still learning Python and all its all charms, abstract class is class that you cannot uh, initialize. It's there just for inheritance. So, and you don't have to declare a bunch of methods. You can just use one method, for example, upload file. And that tells you that any class that inherits uh, that class needs to have an upload file method. Easy piece. 
No. Yeah, I'm super efficient. I get to talk now about all the cool uh, stuff I use this. Now, as I mentioned, I use this all the time when I'm working with different cloud providers. And uh, for example, working with uh, China, going to use uh, Tencent, AliCloud, and stuff like that. When you're working with AWS, AWS stuff. And if you're working in France, they have their own cloud provider. And I just uh, let people write the code for them, and that's it. Main logic, the core of your business. The most mission critical stuff is completely isolated from the other stuff. You can even outsource that uh, stuff thanks to your interfaces, and they're going to do that stuff for you. Meanwhile, you're focusing on the core of your business, which is pretty good because we do not want to write the code we don't have to. So, dependency injection must again help us uh, be lazy. And that's pretty much everything. Now, question. Yeah, I think we just want a pro. Uh, do you do you set that like uh, now it's the Q and A time? <laughs> yes. Yes, of course. So uh, people don't wish I'm please ask in the chat in the matrix. And hello there. There isn't there isn't a lot of question at the moment. Someone's typing, so that's really a good talk. And um, oh no, someone someone posed a picture of the puppy. Um, so yeah, like uh, uh, may I ask, like, what is the um, what advice would you give to people who may be like doing the same thing? Like, could you sum up like maybe three advice you can give people? Yes. Uh, first advice interfaces interfaces are very good and they are a bit uh, hard to wrap our hands around because in python they don't come naturally in uh, statically typed languages they are something that you can't work without them especially unit testing i think we uh, underestimate how pytest and the whole testing suit that this is in python is making our life easier when you see all the things that you need to do around them in order to make your code testable, you you can't do it without dependency injection. So be very happy uh, because we have five tests and give those developers some money, donate stuff to them because they did magic for us. That's the first one. Uh, third one is try to know your uh, domains in the business. What's your core domain? What uh, the third party stuff, something that's not so important, but uh, you can outsource it. And basically on the borders, that's where uh, you're most likely to encounter dependency injections uh, that will allow you to integrate one thing with another. Now, the third advice is break things. I use uh, this all the time to do some weird stuff because uh, AWS does not crash when I want it uh, to crash, only when I don't. So I basically create a bunch of classes that are just drawing exceptions and doing crazy stuff. And I use dependency injection in testing to see how breaking AWS is going to break my code. And the answer is a lot, but thanks to this, I can detect it quite early. It's much nicer when you're, um, development uh, thingy uh, ID tells you something is broken then when your client calls you in the middle of the night to tell you something is broken <laughs> yeah absolutely so there is a question actually now that uh, do you use this kind of di in small projects too mm, yes Basically, uh, since I work a lot with uh, provide cloud providers and the uh, code uh, for small project is, okay, I need some API gateway, write me a Lambda here. I love using uh, dependency injection in there because there are a bunch of stuff that's interconnected. Even though it's a small piece of the code, 
it's very easy to make mistakes. And testing lambdas is not easy. Also, testing lambdas without uh, creating huge pill is not easy. So I use this all the time, but it depends on the domain. If you're writing some uh, simple app, uh, it probably doesn't use any third party dependency, does not work with file system, does not communicate with message queue and stuff like that. You don't need dependency injection. Okay. Yeah, cool. That's good. And then uh, there's an, another question. So we have time. So. I love questions. Yes. Please ask more questions, people. <laughs> yes. So uh, what about typing packages? Actually, there's two questions. So are there advantages advantage to use this over abstract classes? <laughs> you can uh, try and do them without any problems. I just prefer using abstract classes. My cup of tea. Yeah. Um, so, um, so like, what, what, what would be the difference? Like, why, why can't I use, like, you know, I can use it. I can still use it for abstract classes, right? Or, um, or is it like a, you know, or I should not do it? Or what's your thought? <laughs> yeah, my thought is uh, basically Python gives us a bunch of liberties. So write like this, and then write abstract classes. Maybe you can use the mix of them, but for me, I just go full abstract classes and I work with that. That's the stuff I understand. However, this thing uh, with typing packages can also work. So it's different approaches, but uh, they are not mutually exclusive. Personal preference. It's uh, the important stuff is to actually just isolate stuff, uh, decouple them. The way you do that, it's up to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, someone already commented. Abstract class will carry more intention about the usage. Oh, if only from the name of the coder give uh, gave to it, then bear stuff from the typing packages. Um, any any thoughts on that? Do you agree or no? Yes, no. Well, I can put that here. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Abstract classes uh, do carry a more weight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, it's really up to up to you. Then, like, it's it's really like you know, take your own risk. I would guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yeah. That's what they always tell people: break things, try them, break <laughs> them. I I that's how I learned uh, Linux administration. I deleted the server in production. And then I have to uh, bring it up in 10 minutes. I learned so many things. So break them, try them, see what works for you. Don't be afraid of the breaking stuff. I, that's the thing as programmers. We're afraid to break things. You have yeah. your local machine. Try everything and see what uh, makes you feel happy. Python is one of those languages where uh, you know uh, how code is bad because it's not beautiful. First thing, if code is beautiful, then it's good. If it makes you happy, then it's even better code. That's the standard for Python. Try things, see what makes you happy, go with that. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think I think it's a really good advice, actually. Break things and don't be afraid of breaking things. <laughs> Someone already said that, like, yeah, third advice, break things, <laughs> which is very true, I guess. So, um, yeah, I think uh, it's towards the end of this section, and then we are ready to welcome the next speaker. So thank you so much, Boyan. <laughs>